All right, ready, ready. Um, I have been, well, I put out a coming soon video about a week ago or two weeks, I guess it's been now. Um, on a couple videos I'm going to be making. Well, here's the first one. I'm going to be doing a pretty in depth review of the new SOG Seal XR. This guy right here. Now, I've owned SOGs in the past. Actually, um, SOGs were probably my first like dive into the knife market other than like buck 110s you know when i was a kid or whatever um or you know just issued knives that were given to me um without any thought so um i remember going to my neighborhood dick's sporting goods which i no longer go to because they become social justice warriors but I remember seeing the packaging on the SOGs and they were really tactical, you know. I'm like, oh, this is an awesome looking knife, all black, you know. And I would buy it and get it home and realize it was a piece of crap. And I'd always just end up giving them away, but I gave them a couple tries before I finally gave up on them. And then this knife came up on my radar um, when I typically do my cardio, which is um, recumbent bike work, you know, because it doesn't destroy your knees, your back, and let you burn calories, and you can set the resistance high, and you can still actually build some muscle at the same time. I like to sit and watch um, YouTube videos. You know, I'm usually doing like 40 minutes, so um, my newest thing is watching reviews on knives, and I like um, Blade H HQ's weekly knife, the you know, the ones that they have coming in. Um, they'll do like um, videos on um, you know, certain people uh, sending questions and they'll make a knife review or a knife video on that. So kind of enjoy that stuff. I'll throw in other stuff, but lately I've been watching those. But anyway, um, the SOG po popped up probably about a year ago and I immediately fell in love with the shape of it because for me, it looks like a fixed blade Bowie knife um, that has been turned into a folder. I love this clip point design and just the way the you know the it the uh grip is designed with the finger cutouts and the, i really like the pommel on the outside when i first saw it that's what i focused on was just the sheer shape of this knife and i wasn't really looking at it super close so uh, for this review i kind of broke my own rules usually i just kind of wing it um I'm not here to make any money. I'm not here really for a ton of viewers. I mean, I feel like if you are following me, you kind of like think the same way I do and you probably give me a little leeway when I screw up or I repeat myself or I ramble on. Um, I'm not going to be making intros or, um, you know, hey, hit that subscribe button. I don't care if you do or not. I mean, if you like watching me, watch me. If you don't, you know, I don't care. I'm never going to worry about that or change what I do. I just hit the record button say what you gotta say and then upload it and if it doesn't work the first time then um, you're gonna get the screw-ups that I had in it but um, this time I actually made a list of pros and cons with this knife because when I first saw it I'm thinking this might be the one I was looking for a knife that was heavy use that would pretty much do most of the things I wanted to do um, in one package because I have a ton of knives and each one has a specific purpose but they all have the shortcomings. But when I saw this one, I'm thinking, this will almost, it looks like it could almost do everything I want a knife to do. Because I don't care if it's, oh, you know, that looks too big, it might be too menacing or whatever. I don't care, I mean, get over it. If you don't like it, you know, then don't look at it. Um, I like a big knife, I got big hands. Um, so for me, if I can get my whole hand on a knife, that's a huge bonus to me and very few folders I can get my whole hand on it and it feel comfortable. So again, that's what really drew me to this knife. But then as I got it and I started watching other people review it and started looking at it closer and like looking at how it's made, I have a lot of concerns. So for example, I have 12 pros and I have nine cons. Um, some of my cons, obviously everyone kind of that reviews knives, saw them and others. Um, my cons might be just a little too nitpicky for some people. But let me start with a pro. So first, um, 
the blade, obviously, club point, very, very thick, almost a quarter of an inch thick. I mean, you can do a lot with this blade. Um, it's very sharp right out of the box. I mean, um, and you can tell that it was sharpened well, like it doesn't, the, the, uh, the sharpening edge doesn't kind of um, get bigger and smaller at spots. I mean, I'm sure there's a name for that, but it's obvious that it was sharpened well. I mean, it's S SV35 VN steel, which is apparently a good steel, and the steel is made... Uh, the blade is made in America. Um, but yeah, you know, I just love that, 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 that clip point, that very just classic clip point style. Um, ton of jumping all the way up. So, um, and you know, some people complain about the jumping being too excessive. Um, I, I, I'm kind of lost for words at that. I mean, how, I mean, do you have really delicate hands? I mean, I don't know. I mean, my hand, I work with my hands. My hands are covered in calluses. I would rather have a knife that when I lock it in and go to work, I have no chance of it slipping. Um, I have a ton of knives that I would not consider hard use because they don't have any jimping on them. They might be really overbuilt knives, but at the end of the day, what I need for a really heavy use knife is a ton of jimping on the blade, um, some kind of a finger guard down here and I like the the choil um, finger choils on the, uh, the the handle so that when I lock in it's not going to go anywhere that's huge for me and mo most knives don't have that I mean and a lot of them have very slick um, scales and I'll get to those in a minute on this but one good thing about this knife is when you lock in it's not going to go anywhere and obviously the Oversized finger choils, if they're called, I know the finger, this up here is called a finger choil, but the recesses for the fingers on the grip, they're oversized for most people, but actually they're normal for my fingers. But if you're wearing a pair of operator gloves, um, I could see the benefit there. And the, and the, uh, the um, all the jimping and stuff, I mean, you're wearing a pair of gloves, that's really gonna help you lock in. But I, if you ever watch a video, they're like, the jimping is excessive. Well, look at this knife. I mean, this knife is excessive. If you really think about it. everything about this knife is excessive. So of course the jumping is going to be excessive. The only knife I have that comes close to that jumping is my Medford, which I love this knife. <laughs> look at the jumping on that blade. And then underneath, there is a ton of jumping. Um, so, yeah, this knife obviously made so you can wear gloves with it too. Way overbuilt knife. I mean, you know, look at blade thicknesses. There you go. They're both about a quarter of an inch. Now the Medford is the blade is shorter, but same thickness. Um, basic same shape. I mean, it's a clip point, but not a lot. I mean, is it really a clip point? I don't know. I, mean, I watch videos and. They have a million different names for uh, knives, but I would consider that a clip point. I really know drop point, clip point, those are the main uh, knife blade styles. And then, you know, after that, they start to get into a little too much specialty for me. So anyway, so my first pro is the blade style, the blade material, the thickness of the blade. Um, but then I have a con for the blade too. So my con for this blade is a stupid ass hole. All that does is weaken the steel on the blade. It is completely a useless hole. Like, yeah, I guess I can get part of my thumb in there to open it, but why on earth would you not put a thumb stud either on the side of the blade or on the top like this Emerson? It's so much easier to use, and if I had a pair of gloves on, I could get in there. Gloves. No way, you cannot open that with a pair of gloves. So I don't know if that hole was put there to lighten the blade up a little bit, but it's stupid. Um, it just all it does is weaken the blade, especially here. Like if you wanted to do some bushcraft with this knife, not to say I'm not, I mean, I'll tell you later why that's definitely out of the picture, but I mean, look at this Medford. 
Now, it doesn't have any kind of a th thumb stud or anything on it, which is better than having a hole in it. It just has the big fl flipper tab, which is completely fine with me. I mean, I'm never, I, I would never really use a thumb stud on this knife anyway because it has the flipper. Um, that's the whole point of having the flipper. Is that's the quickest deployment you're going to have. Um, my Emerson has that big old thumb stud on top that I actually modified and put a 38. Um, actually, it's a 45 ACP. 45 ACP on top, but that deploys super fast. And then it has the wave feature. Um, if you get if you practice that, you can get really good with that coming out of your pocket. But why on earth couldn't they put a thumb stud on that? It'd be so much easier. And then you'd have two really reliable ways to open this knife if you wanted. I mean, I don't think you need it, but hole stupid. All right, next uh, pro. All right, I talked about that blade steel S three five VN. I'm not a blade steel snob. Uh, as long as the blade is thick, um, that kind of solves that problem for me. Um, coating the blade helps. And if it's if it's steel, it's prone to rust. And just keep your blade clean. You know, um, if you're out using it and digging or getting it wet, just you know wipe it down and keep it clean. Um, and if it does get wet, you know, let it sit open while it dries instead of folding it up and letting it, the blade stay wet inside the, the, the frame of the knife. All right, so let's, I already talked about the blade steel. Um, full hand grip, another pro. Obviously, I can get my whole big hand on there. That is huge for me. Most of my knives, I can't. So that is the full grip on the Seal XR. Now, on my Emerson, I can get a full hand on it, but it is tight. Like my fingers, with this finger choil up here, my hands kind of want to roll off the side. I typically put a lanyard on this knife. Um, so because of the, f the full grip on this knife, and I'll get to another pro, I'll explain why there will be no lanyard on this knife. But yeah, this one I usually put a lanyard on, um, my hand kind of does start to roll off the back of which is like this one was slightly bigger um, you've got the paramilitary 2 um, I can get pretty much my whole hand I just wish it was just a little bit bigger just a little bit bigger because my my pinky just starts to it shouldn't be up all the way like my pinky should be here but it's like up there so with big hands most knives end up just being just slightly small. Here's my Sebenza 21. Again, pinky rolling off the back of it. And then the Medford, again, pinky rolling off the back. So literally the only folder I own right now with a full, a real full hand grip is this Seal XR. Um, so definitely a positive to that aspect. Now another, another negative, this knife has ball bearings. Now, a hard use knife, in my opinion, should always have washers. Um, washers, 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 and washers. Ball bearings. As you know, anything with ball bearings in it, there's a space in between each ball bearing and it can get gunked up and just slow that knife down and uh, washers can and you need oil in between those ball bearings to make them roll um, but you can have washers in there and they don't they can run dry and it's really hard to get any gunk in between them so at some point I might uh, I haven't had this knife apart but I feel like they put a recess in there just for those ball bearings so um, yeah, I wish they'd gone with the washers um, for hard use. This knife is, I mean, it's, it's, if you've seen the videos, it's all put out for this knife. Um, it's supposed to be a hard use knife, so why put ball bearings in it? Anyway, on to another pro. Um, just the overall shape, I already talked about that, but just how it looks like a fixed blade that's been turned into a folder. To me, when I saw that, that just, very few knives that I see right away go, I gotta have that knife, regardless of how crappy it ends up being. 
It's just got that cool look about it, and I just had to have it. So I didn't. I'm not an impulse buyer. I waited till this popped up on eBay. I bought it brand new for 150 bucks, um, free shipping. Um, I feel like I got a pretty good deal. Um, but yeah, so just the overall shape of the knife is a huge plus for me. All right, another con: these damn plastic scales. I know they're reinforced with glass and blah blah blah, but just have that plastic sound. Why couldn't you put a nice pair of G10 like the Emerson, both sides? Um, the Emerson has um, titanium uh, liners. And it's a liner lock knife, which, you know, some people hate liner lock knives. But I have beat the shit out of this knife. And it still locks up perfect. I mean, beat the shit out. This, this knife has seen everything and uh, locks up perfect. Uh, and it's a liner lock. Most people are like, oh, liner lock knife was never hard to use. Um, again, frame lock. Uh, G10 scales. There's just, my favorite scales are either G10 or uh, micarta. Micarta, the great thing about micarta, I don't have a micro. well, these are micarta inlays, but they're kind of smooth, but like I have a bunch of fixed blades and I always insist on micarta on my fixed blades because if they get wet, they actually become tackier, especially if you wear a pair of gloves. The, the micarta, as it gets wet, it becomes tacky and you can really grip it better. And I just love the way uh, micarta will patina over time, but plastic, it just looks cheap, it sounds cheap. You can say everything you want about, oh, it's, you know, it's got some nice uh, this texture on it. But at the end of the day, it's still freaking plastic. And I hate it. Um, I hope a company ends up making um, re replacement scales out of G10 or something. Now, it does have um, stainless steel um, liners. They did skeletonize them, I guess, to cut down on the weight. Um, but at least they aren't just plastic scales. With no liners um, much like I don't have it on the table now but like the bug out when I first got that knife I was like w what do people see in this knife it's a piece of crap I mean especially I get sit and just squeeze you know those plastic scales and I end up putting a pair of uh, copper ones on it and I, I like the knife but my biggest hatred of the new Benchmades is the axis, axis lock much like the XR lock right so I'll go into that in a second so um, talked about the plastic scales and then I'll just go talk about another con is with the XR lock aka axis lock since the um, the patent fell off of uh, Benchmade and they uh, saw it stole it um, they put these caps they're just little plastic caps on the lock bar now at least Benchmade they just used a metal lock bar that went through and you just had a bar and it had um, you know, the bar went all the way through, so it was all metal. The bar stops, and then they put these little plastic caps on it. What do you think those plastic caps are going to do in some hard use over time? They're going to pop out. They're going to fall off. They're going to split in two, um, and they're going to need to be replaced. So, there you go. Why'd they have to put caps on them? Just run the lock bar straight through, make it a little longer, and put a little, you know, make it like round with some um, some type of like ridge on it so you can get a hold of it with your thumb, even with gloves, but they put these plastic caps, another just chintzy looking thing. Um, positive, the flipper tab, really like the shape of it, um, easy to use. Makes a really good hand guard or finger guard at the bottom when, you're, when it's deployed. Uh, fingers definitely gonna slide by, much like the Emerson, I mean Emerson, uh, Medford has a nice guard, you know, and then this one has a finger show up front, so you can choke up on this knife, and you can actually do some, some, um, some, you know, finer cutting, you know, as opposed to this one, which, you know, that's fine with me, I'm glad it's got a, a, a much more, you know, I guess, uh, uh, the use is not going to be like fine cutting. Let's just leave it at that. So, there we go. So, that's a, pod, a pro. Um,
Con is obviously the XR lock. They got those Omega springs in it. And I did watch a video on this knife where somebody had used it, tore it apart, and the Omega springs had started to wear the coating off of the um, stainless steel liners, and then they started to rust. So that's something you have to deal with. The, you know, anytime you have a bunch of moving parts in a knife, they're going to wear. They're going to wear out. They're going to break, and then. Um, if they're touching another surface, you know, it exposes that surface to uh, rust, um, which I don't like. I hate the axis lock. I know that it locks up strong, but for the to get it there, I prefer a liner lock, a, um, a triad lock with the uh, cold steel or a frame lock. All those are pretty much bulletproof. Um, I just hate this thing. I mean. I will never. I would never take this thing in the in the field um, with uh, an XR lock on it. It'd be my luck when I really needed it. The Omega spring would just snap off. And they say, "Oh yeah, you can stick a little stick through there and make it a, a fixed plate." Well, guess what? I will have a fixed plate already. That's not what this knife is for. You know, this is a folder. It goes in my pocket. So if I want a fixed plate, I'll just keep a fix. I'll have a fixed plate, which would I, I would anyway. But I don't want to know that if it breaks, I can turn it into a fixed blade. That helps me not a, not even a little bit. So, not a fan. That that alone, just it being a uh, a uh, axis lock, would that disqualifies as, as a as a hard use knife, in my opinion. Some people will argue, but those Omega springs will eventually break, um, and then you're screwed, in my opinion. Frame lock. Some, um, uh, you know, liner locks, especially if they're made out of titanium, and then the, like the triad lock or a back lock, that's to me is the only way. Only knives you could call hard use are those knives. Argue with me if you want or don't, don't, don't agree, but that's just my opinion. Um, what else? Okay, positive. Pommel on the end. I've wanted one on a knife for a very long time. Um, they say it's the, you know, what, what, what kind of gimmick key slogan did they give it? Um, persuader tool, I think that's what they call it. But you know, it, it, you can use this for a lot of things. You can break glass with it. Um, I mean, anything you need to just hit, to like jam something back in that's popped out of something. I, there's a million different things you could use that for. Um, what's great though is um, it helps. It's just something a little more for me to grab when I'm taking it out of my pocket. I don't like a deep carry knife. That's why I put lanyards on most of my knives. Most people are like, I don't want to see it. Well, I don't care if you see it. Um, if you don't see it, it's so much harder to get out of your pocket. So um, with that carry clip where it is in there, I've got a full inch of knife sticking out of my pocket. So for that reason, I will not need to um, put a lanyard on this knife. It has plenty of uh, knife sticking out of my pocket that I can grab it. All right, um, I already talked about the next con was uh, the wear on the stainless steel liners. We talked about the Omega Springs. Um, they will wear, this knife will need maintenance, especially if it has some heavy use outside where it can get wet, uh, dirt and grime inside of it. So it will need to be taken apart and cleaned. I can't just rinse it out. Um, like this uh, Medford here, I would have no problem Look how old how open that back is on that thing. I could just take this and hose it out and just lay it down and I guarantee it would dry and be completely fine. Um, same with my um, Zabenza. There's nothing in it to go wrong. I mean, it's literally just a frame with a couple det with a detent and a blade. And, you know, it's so easy to take apart. They give you the tools to take apart and clean it. How, I mean, how much nicer can it be? I just wish it was more, had some more grip on it. Um, it was just slightly bigger. I mean, it is what it is, but I would sooner take this um, into the field than I would this. All right. Um, no partial serration. This is just me. But if I wanted a hard use knife, I need a little bit of serration for cutting rope, cutting paracord, cutting uh, zip ties. I mean, you can cut it with the blade, but I want to be able to grab it with one um, 
with one of the teeth on the serration and break it immediately. I don't want to sit and saw at it with the blade. So serration's huge for me. Um, another pro, obviously, I talked about was the blade thickness. Love that. Uh, the texture on the scales is a positive, although it's plasticky. Wish it was G10. Um, here's a big one. They put right here on the blade, USA made. Well, they're being very literal about that because this blade is USA made. The rest of the knife is made, where do you think? China. So, they've duped us. This knife is not made in the USA. The blade steel is. Um, but then it shipped over to China to be assembled. And who knows if the plastic scales and the backspacer and the, the stainless steel liner, liners, clip. Who knows who makes those? Probably made in China. So that irritates me. I don't like to be misled. I'm misled a lot with that kind of crap. I'll buy some say it's made in America. Like, I'll give you an example. My newest riding gloves, made out of buffalo hide. Bought them from a company called Maroon Bell. And they're like, proud, you know, proud American company, blah, blah, blah. And then when you get the gloves, they say, made in Pakistan. So they send their buffalo hide over to Pakistan and have that crap made over there. That irritates me. All right, so last thing, a uh, large opening on the back so that you can rinse it out, but still gunk's gonna get in there and big enough to use with gloves, obviously made to you put a pair of operator gloves on. Um, but half and half, 50-50 a good knife i will use it i would not take it into a situation where i'd have to depend on it for my life um i'd always be in the back of my mind this thing's going to break so i would definitely go with a frame lock back lock triad lock or a liner lock knife um probably something like my medford or my sebenza or my emerson those are tried and true even the paramilitary too very much. It's just a little thin knife stock for me, blade stock for me. But anyway, that's all I have for this one. Um, if you appreciated it, let me know. Uh, if I missed anything, let me know. If you don't agree with me or if you agree with me, let me know. But I just want to do a little in-depth one on that one just to uh, give it its due because I've been waiting on that knife for a long time. And don't get me wrong, I do love the knife. It just, it looks tacked cool, but... Um, when you really start to break it down as parts, it's missing a lot. And I hope someday to find a knife that I could pretty much be a single use for everything. But awesome knife, I will carry it, I have been carrying it. I uh, just will not depend on it for my life. That's it, I'll talk to you later.